Hello everyone, I'm Hei Hyun Zhou, an assistant professor at Sungshin University. I'm going to present our work named VIG that mitigates temporal memory safety violations. Why does the temporal memory safety matter? Uh, this is because the impact of temporal memory safety violations can be critical. Actually, such violations like user to free is the key vulnerability that can be used to bypass advanced defense techniques. Okay, let's go to look what is the temporal memory safety. And we will consider the use of the free vulnerability as an example to show the implications of the temporary memory safety violations. Temporal memory safety is a property that ensures all memory dereferences are valid at the time of the dereference, uh, which means the pointed to object must be always the same as when the pointer was created. Uh, this temporal memory safety can be broken when an object that a pointer is pointing to is replaced with another object while the pointer is pointing the same address. And from the time when a pointer is not pointing to a valid object, we call such a pointer is a dangling pointer. If there is a user of the free vulnerability, to exploit it, uh, we must take the following three steps. We first need to make a dangling pointer. Then we need to allocate an object to overlap with the uh, the allocated victim object. And lastly, we should dereference the dangling pointer. Therefore, to defend against user actively exploits, we need to prevent any of these three steps. Also, we can classify defense mechanisms based on what they prevent among them. The first class of user after free defenses is called pointer invalidation. They prevent the creation of a dangling pointer by invalidating pointers that point to the allocated memory regions. Next, safe memory allocation approaches prevent allocations of objects to the memory areas which were previously occupied by other objects. Lastly, access validation approach attempts to prevent UGF-3 attacks by validating every pointer dereferences. While these approaches provide strong security and acceptable memory overhead, they all incur high runtime overhead because they must check all the pointer dereferences during the runtime. In this work, our goal is to provide a practical runtime mitigation against temporal memory safety violations by employing the access validation approach. Our core idea is object ID inspection. VIG assigns a random ID to every allocated object and stores it in the unused bits of the corresponding pointer value. Then VIG inspects the pointer value before its dereference. We store an object ID into the unused bits in pointers. Currently, uh, the most significant 16 bits in every pointer value are unused for data pointers on most processors. Therefore, uh, we believe the idea can be deployed for almost more than 64 bits architecture processors. Based on the core idea, we designed VIG that automates transformation of operating system corners and C++ applications. Uh, VIG first takes as input a program compiled and performs static analysis for the performance optimization and performs instrumentation to insert object ID inspect inspection functions at pointer dereferencing sites that must be inspected. Okay, let's see how VIG works at the high level. Uh, when an object is allocated, the memory allocator generates and stores an object ID at the base address of the object. Uh, and it also returns the object ID with the base address of the object to the pointer. Then, if a pointer value that has an object ID is referenced, VIG inspects object IDs in the pointer and the object to ensure that the pointer value references the original object for which the pointer was created. In addition, VIG inspects object IDs when freeing the object to prevent double free violations. From now on, I will explain the object ID. Uh, we carefully designed the object ID because it directly affects the security and applicability of VIG. An object ID has 16 bits and consists of two parts, an identification code and a base identifier. The identification code is a random number. VIG uses the identification code to identify each allocated object. And the second part of an object ID is the base identifier. 
in an object side, an object ID is stored at the base address of a newly allocated memory region. However, during the runtime, a pointer does not necessarily point to the base address of an object. Instead, it may point to any field inside the object. Therefore, we need to be able to map a pointer value to the base address of the object to which the pointer uh, points to so that we can find the object ID. The basic idea of generating the base identifier is to align memory addresses. Fig aligns allocated objects to a predefined alignment of 2 to the x bytes, which uh, creates memory slots of at least 2 to the x bytes. An object may require one or more slots depending on its size. For example, if a slot is 16 bytes, a 24-byte object will use two slots, and by aligning the addresses of objects, the least significant x bits of all objects' base addresses must be zero. So in this case, the least significant four bits of all objects' base addresses will be zero. To determine the alignment size, we use two predefined constants, m and n. Um, 2 to the m is the maximum size of objects that can be covered by using slots of 2 to the n bytes. The size of a base identifier is then m minus n bits. For example, suppose that uh, m is 12 and n is 6. The maximum size of any object is 4 kilobytes, and the size of each slot is 64 bytes. Uh, and then the base, ID, the base identifier will be 12 minus 6, uh, so 6 bits long. These two constants must be configured before VIC's instrumentation. VIC uh, asks the users uh, to specify M and N with the assistance of knowledge of object size. Uh, specifically, VIC helps users to determine optimal choices of two parameters by identifying sizes of all the involved objects in the target program. With the base identifier, we can easily calculate the base address of any object by copying specific bits of pointers. Uh, and uh, both operations shown in the slide only use bitwise instructions so that the operations would not affect the performance of VIG very much. The size of object ID is limited, so the entropy of object IDs also has to be limited. Uh, as you may notice, therefore, in theory, there can be object ID collisions. Um, in our evaluation, we use 10 bits of identification code, so the collision ratio is about 0.09%. However, we could successfully defeat all known user to free attacks in the Linux kernel. 0.09% uh, may not seem very low, but we believe it will still be very difficult for an attacker to bypass the mitigation in practice. Okay, from now, I'm going to explain how we optimize the number of inspection functions through the sound static analysis that Vic performs. Uh, Vic inspects memory accesses and thus its runtime overhead is proportional to the number of pointer inspections that Vic inserts into the target program. Therefore, our optimization goal is to minimize the number of inspect functions in the protected program. To this end, we define user after free safe pointers and do not inspect pointer operations that use user after free safe pointers. For the simplicity, I'm going to first explain what is the user after free unsafe pointer. User after free unsafe pointer is a globally known pointer that points to the hip memory. Uh, even though a pointer is pointing to the hip, as far as the pointer is stored only in the stack, we consider the pointer is user after free safe, and Vic does not protect them. Um, this is because exploiting user after free uh, by using such pointers is almost impossible. On the other way, uh, user after free safe pointers can be defined like this, as shown in the slide. Uh, also, our static analysis is interprocedural analysis, so we consider an argument is user after free safe if uh, this pointer value is user after free safe in the caller function and a return value is user after free safe uh, if the pointer value is user after free safe in the callie function. 
Okay, um, after determining if a, if a pointer value is user free safe at all pointer operations, we further optimize the number of inspect functions for each function. Uh, the idea of this step is to inspect only the very first pointer operation of a user free unsafe pointer value in a function, and thus user free unsafe pointer values are inspected once in every function. Uh, we carefully take this step with our reaching definition analyzer to detect changes of pointer values along all possible execution paths. Lastly, uh, for the accuracy, VIX uh, static analysis is both uh, flow sensitive and path sensitive. Um, simple backtracking on the data flow is insufficient to determine the user after free safety of a pointer value at an arbitrary uh, pointer operation. Therefore, we carefully consider all possible cases that affect the user after free safety of a pointer value. Here is a running example of our static analysis lizard. Uh, the given code consists of four functions and one global variable. Uh, we suppose that uh, this pointer operation functions execute first. First, in the function, a new heap memory is allocated and its pointer value is stored into this safe pointer in the stack. Therefore, uh, the pointer operation uh, safe pointer equal 10 is user after free safe. However, the pointer value returned from the get object function is user after free unsafe. This is because the get object function is not under our analysis scope, so we assume that the pointer value is user after free unsafe for security. Next, uh, each pointer is used as an argument for the add and sub functions. Uh, at the time when the add function is called, uh, the status of safe pointer is user apt free safe. Therefore, uh, the pointer operation in the add function does not need to be inspected by V. However, in the sub function, the pointer operation must be inspected because the argument is user apt free unsafe. Next, uh, the function executes uh, the if else statement. Uh, in the if condition, uh, the safe pointer becomes a global variable through the make global function here. Uh, therefore, the status of the safe pointer is user to free unsafe after returning from the make global function. So uh, the safe pointer is now user to free unsafe pointer. Uh, under the S condition, the result of the function call does not affect the user to free safety of the safe pointer's pointer operation. So we don't need to inspect the pointer operation using the safe pointer here uh, under the uh, S condition. Next, uh, this pointer operation using the safe pointer must be inspected. Uh, this is because the pointer value can either be user after free safe and user after free unsafe because of uh, the if else condition, uh, which we can't know. However, we do not inspect this unsafe pointer's pointer operation because uh, the unsafe pointer value has already been inspected by VIG in the same function, and it does not contain a new uh, pointer value copied from somewhere. Uh, as shown in this running example, our static analysis is flow sensitive and path sensitive, uh, which not only uh, significantly reduces the performance overhead, but also helps uh, provide robust security guarantees against user after free attacks. We implemented VIG for two different operating system corners on x86 and ARM64 architectures. Also, we implemented VIG TBI with the top byte ignore feature of ARM64 because the TBI affects only the most significant 8 bits. In this implementation, we do not use the base identifier. Therefore, VIG TBI inspects pointer operations using pointer values that point to the base address of a memory object. Lastly, uh, we also implemented VIG for C and C++ user space programs. In our evaluation, we checked the effectiveness and the performance overhead of VIG. To evaluate the effectiveness of VIG on the Ubuntu corner, we selected six known user to free vulnerabilities and tested them against the VIG protected corner. 
uh, also uh, because the current uh, x86 64 CPUs do not implement the TBI feature, we manually analyzed every vulnerability in our data set to see if weak TBI will defend against each, US, each user free exploit. As expected, uh, weak protected corners detected user freeze caused by those vulnerabilities. For Android corners, we picked four user-to-free vulnerabilities. Uh, weak protected corners also detected all user-to-frees caused by those vulnerabilities. However, weak TBI did not stop the exploit for CVE 2019-2015 because this exploit uses a pointer that points to the middle of an object while weak TBI only inspects pointers that point to the base address of an object. For performance evaluation, we use micro benchmarks on Ubuntu and Android corners. Uh, when you applied or optimization methods, runtime overheads for each corner is about 20%. The use of TBI reduces the number of inspect functions and make the runtime overhead of weak TBI negligible under 2%. Then we evaluated the memory overhead of each corner when protected by VIC. Uh, we measured by using two different scenarios. First, when you simply align memory objects by 64 bytes, and when you align memory objects based on their sizes as shown in the table. When VIC aligned memory addresses by 64 bytes, the overall memory overhead was around 42%. However, VIC achieved much lower memory overhead when it employed the alignment strategy as it is described in the table. For even lower memory overhead, VIC will need various sets of constants that are optimally calculated for different sizes of corner objects, which just require a more complex implementation that uh, will live as future work. In addition, we measured performance of VIC protected C and C++ programs. Uh, let's take a look in the lizard in detail. Uh, VIC has average runtime overhead of around 10%, higher than FFMLog and same as Marcus within rounding error. And VIC incurs 9% of memory overhead on average, the smallest memory overhead than any other protections. However, uh, when you compare the average runtime overhead on the most pointer intensive eight benchmarks uh, in terms of the number of memory allocations and pointer operations, uh, VIC incurs uh, average runtime overhead of 20%, uh, which is lower than the others. Lastly, we compare the memory overhead on the most four allocation intensive benchmarks. Uh, VIC incurs much less memory overhead than the others. Thanks for listening. Uh, I will be happy to answer any question.